Jackie Moon, aka one of pop culture's most naturally hilarious personalities in Clay Thompson, becomes a different person when he steps on the court. Resembling his prime self entering 2022's playoffs, three games during the NBA's shortest calendar regular season month of April saw China Clay average 37 points, making an unheard of 51.1% of his 14 three point attempts per game. You can expect Thompson to get his splash brother Steph Curry back healthy for the postseason. But even without Steph, the Dubs just reeled off an unpredictable five-game winning streak and are suddenly rounding into championship form. This video shows you how the Golden State Warriors heated up at just the right time and why it's scary. Right before that, 90.3% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The Warriors' first round matchup comes against the Denver Nuggets, featuring the two-time MVP Stephen Curry, assuming he gets healthy, facing off against the soon-to-be two-time MVP Nikola Jokic. We'll get to Curry's status in a minute, but assuming everything goes well, we're not only about to see a battle between a pair of the most elite players in today's game, but the Joker and the Chef are right there among the most efficient offensive talents in the 75-year history of the NBA. Over the last decade, Steph Curry's made the term gravity normal in a basketball context, with his drawing of every type of aggressive ball screen coverage, whether it's traps, blitzes, hedges, or screen level step-ups. Steph's constant movement without the rock tears apart opposing coaches' defensive game plans and opens up everything for the four other guys around him. Identically to Steph, the best passing center of all time in the Joker, draws a tremendous amount of defensive attention as well. That's because there's not a single center in the association who can come close to checking him in single coverage, specifically down low in the post, where according to Warriors SB Nation, Nikola puts up 1.17 points per possession in the post, which ranks him in the 91st percentile. Denver's nifty 7-foot, 250-pound phenom at the 5 spot has an array of incredibly polished post moves, pristine footwork, surprising agility, while possessing arguably the best touch around the bucket of any post player in modern day history. Most impressively, Nikola can dominantly score on all three levels with a 9-foot-5 standing reach, shooting an incredible 59% from the mid-range, Jokic's 33.7% from three, on around four attempts per game is technically below average, but if defenders leave him open on pop-outs or flares, the man's going to drain those deep-range attempts with ease. While Steph and Nikola are similar in the sense that they're a few of the greatest players of this generation who draw practically the same amount of defensive attention, the pressure from the fans and media on these two superstars is completely different. Curry's expected to win, and if he doesn't, he'll face a ton of criticism. Conversely for Jokic, if he finds a way to take Denver to the second round without Jamal Murray or Michael Porter Jr., he'll be looked at as a legend. While Golden State lost three games to Denver this season, the Warriors didn't have Draymond Green services in every one of their four matchups against the Nuggets. Those games, Jokic averaged 28, 16, and 9 on 52, 17, and 68 shooting splits. Those numbers were more than enough to carve up a Warrior defense, which didn't have many options at the time. There were instances where Kavon Looney thrived at stopping Jokic, but the Dubs' most valuable five-man defender can't do everything by himself, and having the former DPOY healthy for these upcoming playoff games should definitely help out. Jokic has had success when being matched up with Dre in the past, but Green's been finding his form as of late, and not just defensively. Playoff Draymond starting to show signs of life, as Green's last six games of 2021-22's regular season saw him post typically solid triple single averages of 9, 8, and 7, but more noteworthy, his 9 points per game came on unbelievably efficient shooting splits of 57, 75, and 83. In terms of the face of Golden State's franchise, two weeks before the end of the season, the Warriors announced that Steph Curry was out for the rest of the regular season and that he'd be evaluated again on April 11th. They've evaluated Steph, and like nearly all injury updates for the Warriors this season, it's inconclusive. Despite missing 18 games in total this year, Steph Curry led the league in three-pointers made. There's no reason to be that pessimistic about Curry, who started working out by himself on the court last week, but the most recent press release won't make anyone too confident that Steph's going to suit up for Game 1 against Denver on Saturday night. 
Curry's still dealing with a bone bruise and a strained ligament from the unprovoked Marcus Smart assault from four weeks ago, but he is out of a walking boot and moving well laterally during his bench celebrations. And what a damn luxury it is for Steve Kerr and Warrior fans to have the services of an up-and-coming phenom at point guard in the shifty, explosive guard with a Kyrie-esque handle in Jordan Poole. Jordan and the man he backed up in Steph Curry are the first teammates in history to lead the regular season in free throw percentage. Poole shot 92.5% from the free throw line, while Curry shot 92.3. Absolutely on fire at the perfect time, Deadpool has the third most 20-point game since March, only ranking behind the two top MVP candidates in Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. Jordan Poole's definitely going to be the Warriors' biggest X-factor, whether Curry returns or not. Coach Steve Kerr gave his thoughts on the Nuggets series, saying, They beat us 3 out of 4, but each game was so different based on availability. Biggest thing for us is that we can't give up the easy stuff. There were plenty of back cuts and layups. We can't have the wondering on the floor after a TO. Jokic throws a full court pass for a layup. Meanwhile, for Klay Thompson, if the three game sample size this month I mentioned in the intro was too small for you, since Steph Curry's injury on March 16th, Clay closed out the season averaging 28 points and 5.5 three-pointers per game, making 46% from the floor and 44% from three over the next nine games. Overall, it's nothing less than inspirational that after two major surgeries on both of his legs, first tearing his left ACL and then a ruptured Achilles tendon on his right leg, Clay finished the season averaging 20 points and shooting 39% from distance. Overall for the Warriors, it bodes well for them that after an extremely rocky stretch since Curry's injury, they capped off the season in winning fashion, currently the hottest team in the Western Conference. In the final five games before the playoffs, the Suns went 2-3, and three, the Grizzlies went 2-3, and three, the Nuggets went 3-2, and two, the Jazz went 3-2, and two, the Lakers went 1-4, and four, while the Warriors went a flawless 5-0, and oh, building up momentum in timely fashion. Who wins the Warriors against the Nuggets series and in how many games? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Thierry, who says, Something I loved was Coach Ime Udoka's willingness to experiment. He caught a lot of flack for ideas that went wrong, but it allowed him to find Robert Williams' calling card on defense. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. Deflo signing off.